Okay, I'm going to take a break from doing the drawing stuff to uh, do something else. Let's, uh, we've got a system browser open. We're looking at our test class, and I'm going to type in some code, paste in some code. Bytecode sample 1. I've created a, a local variable, called it A, and then I've put the value 2 into A. And now I'm going to save it. It's going to complain because it's not doing anything. OK to remove it? No. So it's saved. Now you notice over here at the far right of our browser is a little button called Source. You click on it and you get various options. The one I'm going to select now is Bytecodes. This shows you the compiled code in the Squeak VM machine language. And you notice that it's pushing a constant 2 on the stack and then it's popping that constant into temp 0 and then it's returning self which is basically it's going to return the the class the object that um, it's dealing with. You can think of the stack as basically a stack of numbers or in the case of Smalltalk a stack of objects. Everything in Smalltalk is an object so when you push a constant it pushes the two on the stack and then when you pop it into temp it pops it off into temp zero wherever temp zero is. So it pushes it on the stack that should be a two and then it pops it so it takes it off of the top layer of the stack and it says pop into temp1 so it puts it over here in this temp1 thing so that may not have been very clear but that's okay it, because basically um, you'll see as, as things go on, let's go back to uh, source. Instead of returning self, which is the automatic thing, now let's return, oh say, 2, not w, 2. And if we save it, again it's going to complain. Now we're going to look at our source, our bytecode, and it says push the constant onto the stack, that's over here. Pop it into the temp and return a constant too. Which, if you think about it, that's kind of obvious. It pushes the constant, puts it into the variable too, and uh, then returns the constant. Okay, now instead we're going to um, return the value A. Save it. Oh, since a is now being used because it's got a return. It didn't complain. So let's look at the byte source of the byte code again. And we see we're pushing the constant to pop into temp, put it up here, push the temp onto zero, and then return the top. In other words, the topmost level, which is this right here. We put a two onto the stack, took the two off the stack and put it here, and then took this two and put it back onto the stack and said, return, pointing to here. Cool. Now we're maybe starting to get somewhere. Let's try something else. Let's make a second variable, b. All right. Let's say b colon equals a colon equals 2. We can pretty much predict now what it's going to say. It's going to complain a little bit. b is not used. OK to remove it. No. Look at our source. Look at our byte codes. Push the constant 2. Store into temp 0. Pop into temp 1. In other words, we're now going to put it into our second temp. 
there's a 2, which I can't draw at that line. Push temp back into 0 and return top. Okay, so suppose instead we wanted to return B. Let's see what happens. Now A appears to be unused. Do we want to remove it? No. We look at our byte code. Push the constant 2 onto the stack. Store it into temp 0. Pop it into temp 1. Push temp 1. And return the top. So let's see how that is different from the other one. Let's return A again. Save it. No, we don't need to remove it. Look at the byte code. Push temp 0. Return top. So you notice there's now a difference. So let's go back to what we were doing and add something a little more complicated. Let's see. B equals A equals 2. Now we're going to return the array. A followed by B. Now I can already predict that we're not going to have a problem anymore with one of these constants being or these variables not being used because in fact we're both returning both of them referenced in this array. So let's see what that looks like. First of all we save. It didn't complain about something not being used. Look at the byte codes. Okay, push constant 2 onto the stack, store into temp 0, pop into temp 1, push temp 0, which means put it back on the stack, and now we're going to push temp 1, which means take this one and put it onto the stack. Notice what happens with the stack. You push it down, which means these things get pushed down and whatever is pushed on becomes the top one. And now we're going to pop 2 into array new. So pop this one followed by this one into an array new and then return the top. So I'm not quite sure how that's happening or what that is doing. Pop 2 into array new 2. I am guessing that that is putting an array new onto the top. So there would actually be, you would pop these two that is to say, move them off the stack. And actually put them into this array. A for array. That has been created. So when you return, it's still returning the top of the stack. So anything that called or, or sent a message to this uh, to this object is going to get the return value of whatever is in the top of the stack which in this case is that array so you can see you can actually sit there and and play around and make more ever more elaborate things and you can actually start to see sort of how the uh, squeak uh, virtual machine works you know, let's look at another option. We can always decompile, which will go back to our original. If we didn't have source code for this, it would call everything a temp variable. And we can look at documentation, which gives us just the comment strings. We could pretty print, which would show us a nice color for things if we didn't have pretty printing enabled already. And uh, tiles, I have no idea what tiles do and it doesn't either. It said message not understood. 
So that's uh, an interesting little thing you can do with Squeak is you can actually analyze the uh, machine code of what you're writing. And sometimes it helps you visualize better what's going on. Let's, let's add one more variable. Let's call this my array. And now we're going to say my array colon equals this right here. And we're going to return my array. So what does that do? Save it. No complaints about unused variables. And we're look, going to look at the bytecode. Pushes a constant 2 on the stack. Stores into temp 0. Pop into temp 1. Push temp 0 on the stack. Push temp 1 on the stack. So this goes into here. And then this one gets sent above it. So you now have two references. One to here, one to here. Pop it into an array. Pop into temp2, which means put that array reference into uh, the third temporary variable. This now holds our array. Push the reference to the array onto the stack. Remember, all this has been pushed and then popped, so it's not there anymore. I really should make it a bigger eraser, but whatever. So the reference to array coming from this, uh, this is 0, temp 0, this is temp 1, and this is temp 2. So now the reference to array, which has been pushed into temp 2, or popped into temp 2, is now pushed back onto the stack, and you get your return, return to the top. So what, you're, what the calling uh, method sees is whatever is on the top of the stack, which in this case now the array. So you see, it's pretty cool. You can just sit there and analyze things as you uh, type it in and then compile it.